Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about industrialization and basically how the industrial city becomes the industrial city and also what the effects of industrialization and urbanization are on the people that live there. So for this, for this video, we have to look at a couple essential questions here. Number one, how does industrialization and urbanization, how do they relate to each other? Industrialization, as you'll see, leads to urbanization. So once we figure out what each of those means, we have to also look at how they relate to each other. The second essential question is, how did industrialization impact the life of workers and children? It has a huge impact, as you'll see, on the people that work in factories. Uh, it's adults and children that work in factories. They work crazy hours, they have terrible conditions, and their home life is not much better. And that's what we're going to take a look at, uh, the specifics of that. And number three, we're going to learn about laissez-faire economics. And we have to figure out how that relates to the bad working conditions of the Industrial Revolution. So these are the three questions that you should be answering. Uh, on a sheet of paper at the end of this video and handing in in class to show that you did the homework. So let's define industrialization and urbanization. Industrialization is the process of developing an industry. So industrialization is the development of industry. So mills, production factories, railroads as well. If we need railroads to get the product from the factory to the market, we'd add that as well. So infrastructure, but anything related to industrial production, factories, mills, railroads, when you develop those, when you build the mill, when you create the railroad, that is industrialization. The other term we're going to use is urbanization. And you can see a certain word here, urban. Urban typically means a city. So urbanization, right, means the creation of a city. So how do cities grow? How do they boom? It's because what happens is the more factories you have, the more workers you need, and people move to these cities, and, and cities pop up out of nowhere uh, as a result of industrialization. And I'll show you an example in just a second. But just to give you a, a statistic here, the number of cities in England, for example, in Great Britain, with over 100,000 people in them, grew from 22 cities with over 100,000 people in them to 47 in just 50 years. Imagine in your lifetime seeing twice as many large cities around you. In, in just 50 years, it's a huge number to grow so fast during this time period. So let's look at this map right here, these two maps to kind of illustrate how much of an impact the Industrial Revolution has on population and geography. Uh, in 1700, which is right at the beginning of the Agricultural Revolution from Section 1, there's only one city, London, in England, that has over 100,000 people in it. And the suburbs around it are not so dense, they're a little dense, 250 to 500 people per square mile, okay? By the end of the Industrial Revolution, way at the end, in 1911, and by the way, most of this growth happens in just a 50-year period, or 100-year period max, look at how many cities we have with over 100,000 people in them. Dozens of cities, right? London, and look at London from point A to point B here, from 1700 to 1900. Not only is London still a major city, but it spreads out. We call that suburban sprawl uh, or urban sprawl. Right around London, you have so much space with a dense population, over 500 people per square mile. And then that original area of 250 to 500 people per square mile is way spread out from the, the center of the city. I also want to point out, too, that you see in the middle of the map, the second map, you're going to see many different cities clustered around this L area right here, and that's because this is a major river area in Great Britain. So you're going to see that because there's a major river, we can put a lot of mills on that river, and that's why a lot of these industrial cities also pop up around rivers. But nonetheless, this, this, these two maps here show us that there was a huge explosion in the development of cities and population um, during the agricultural and industrial revolutions. So let's talk about those industrial cities. Factories were built in clusters. Uh, they were surrounded. They surrounded the resources. So you would put your railroads near the mines, for example. Uh, if you're trying to get coal and iron, you'd put your factories on rivers so you could use water wheels uh, you could, and, and so on and so forth. Polluted rivers, right, because we're just going to dump our dye in the rivers. Burning coal creates a lot of carbon uh, dioxide, and, and this is really the beginning of the global warming situation. Uh, and there's soot on top of everything because coal burns so dirty, especially unfiltered like it was in the Industrial Revolution. And you'll see that the living and working conditions were horrible. So how did, how did we get to 
uh, the industrial city. Well, most of these places started looking something like this, and this is a really cartoony uh, picture, but I'm pretty proud of it because I made it myself. But this is what you would probably be living like uh, in the early 1700s during the agricultural revolution, is you would have your own house right here, and your neighbors would be far away, and you'd have neighbors way down here, and all around you, you'd see trees and farms and vegetation, and it was spread out, and it was a nice place to live. See? But what happens is over time, we start to develop industrial production methods, and we industrialize. So on this map right here, where we can see the same area, less trees, by the way, sad, uh, but in the same area, we start to see that we're starting to produce factories along the river. And along with those factories, you need to be able to get the goods from those factories to where people will buy them. So we also had to create railroads, and railroads pop up. So the process of creating factories, creating railroads, this is industrialization. What you'll notice, too, is that we've lost a lot of trees and we've lost a lot of space and it's starting to get a little crowded with these factories and these railroads. But it's going to get even worse because you'll notice we only have three houses on this map. So we don't have enough people to work in these factories. We're going to need more people. And now you see, by the end of this process, not only do we have our factories, not only do we have our railroads, but we now have the people we need to work in the factories. And we've crammed all these houses together they don't look so nice in real life, but all these houses are crammed together, and these are what's called tenement housing. And basically what happens is you live in these houses, uh, you go to work 14 to 16 hours a day in the factory, and you go back home. And that's your life, six days a week. You get a day off for church, how nice. Or you'd work a half day. But that's it. You go from home to work, work to home, back and forth, and that's your life. But you'll notice this is a very different landscape than when we started in the agricultural revolution. And that's the process of urbanization. First you get the industry, industrialization, and then you bring the people in to work in the factories. And as you crowd around the people, it becomes a city, and that's urbanization. So that's how industrialization and urbanization relate to each other. So let's look at some pictures here of actual industrial cities during the Industrial Revolution. This is a picture of a river in Manchester, England, uh, an industrial city in 1844. And what you'll see, and it's hard to see because it's black and white, This would, if it were in color, if you were here, you would see that it is very hazy because all of these smokestacks here are just pumping out, pumping out smog from burning coal 16 hours a day. So it's a really, really sooty, nasty air that you're breathing in the city. You also might not be able to see it very well, but down here we have these spouts that are just pouring excess dye from the textile into the rivers. So this river, it's hard to see, but you would see, you wouldn't even be able to see into it at all if you were standing on one of those bridges. Uh, in fact, it would probably smell gross too because there's gases in there and there's, uh, when it interacts with the water and the chemicals uh, and the dye, and then it kills off the fish and the fish die and they rot. It's just nasty. And, there, and we'll read a document in class that actually talks about gas bubbles that pop up from the surface of the water and smell horrible. And, and you can see there's no open space along the river. All the open space along the river is taken up by these factories. So this is what a crowded industrial city looks like. And living conditions in these cities were horrible. Large families lived in tenement housing, which was small apartments, a lot of times with no running water, small windows, if any, uh, disease ripped through them because you lived in such close quarters. A typical room uh, in a tenement house, as we'll demonstrate in class, was only 10 feet by 10 feet. And, and some of these families, because they had to have so many kids to work to pay the bills, had 8, 10, 12 people in them. And they might have two of those rooms. So it's very, very cramped, poor living condition. And this right here is a courtyard wedged between two tenement houses or a few tenement houses. And you'll see a couple stories high. There's not a lot of space in the middle. There is some drainage, but that drainage, believe it or not, is for sewerage. So you'd have outhouses in the court where people would share them, maybe 100 people to an outhouse. Um, sewerage would be dumped out the window because there's no indoor plumbing. Very, very, very nasty conditions in these tenement houses. And here's a tenement house space on the top floor of a building. And you can see it's just an open loft space. And an entire family of 10 to 14 people would live in uh, one loft room like this. No privacy either in these tenement houses. And they could barely afford to live here. This is the best they could do. Working conditions, not good during the Industrial Revolution. For working hours, a typical work day would be 14 to 16 hours, six days a week, just to get by. The factories were dangerous, and we'll look at documents in class about this. They were not well lit. 
didn't have fire exits. They weren't required by law. Faulty equipment led to lots of injuries and deaths. No health benefits, no Aflac duck here. If you got hurt, you lost your job. So let's say you hurt your arm in a machine. You can't go see a doctor because you can't afford it. It's going to get infected. You might lose your arm. And because you can only work half as fast with one arm, you lose your job. Really, really terrible conditions. Children were also expected to work in these factories. Children worked adult hours, often 10, 12, even 14 hours a day, for even less pay because they were younger. They were better suited for certain jobs, too, like unjamming the threading machines while they're still running, so they would have to crawl under, reach up their hand, pull out the excess cotton, and just hope that it, the machine doesn't start running while their hand's in there. Very, very dangerous work, and we'll look at some pictures and examples in class. Uh, factory owners would often adopt children, because if they're your own kids, you don't have to pay them. So factory owners would adopt orphans that were abandoned by their parents who couldn't take care of them. They would make them their kids, and then they would work in the factory for no pay. Uh, very dangerous work for children. It's not anything like child labor laws that we have today. Those didn't even exist yet. And a lot of this is because of this idea of laissez-faire government from Adam Smith. Uh, the idea that the government should be out of business, hands off, let businesses run themselves, let the market run itself, and everything will work out. Everybody will make money and everybody will eventually get wealthier. Um, the government didn't want to get in the way of profits, so they didn't require businesses to put in safety regulations and limit child labor and limit hours for workers. Um, it is an extreme version of laissez-faire government. And that's really what causes a lot of the problems in the Industrial Revolution, but it's also going to cause the workers to push back and fight back and demand that the government do something, which we'll look at uh, later on in this chapter. So let's go back to those essential questions uh, that you have to answer and bring into class. Number one, how do industrialization and urbanization relate to each other? And we looked at that earlier in the video. Look at those diagrams of the city that, or what becomes a city. Uh, number two, how did industrialization impact the life of workers and children? So give some examples that we just talked about. And how does laissez-faire relate to working conditions? How did laissez-faire connect to and cause the working conditions we saw in this video? So write your answers to these questions. We'll start by discussing them in class, and that is industrialization.